Hello guys, so today is the 5th of December. Here is the picture so you can see it. <clears throat> it's a very unusual way of travelling. Joachim was glad there were no chocolates or plastic figures in the old advent calendar. But Papa had not been quite right when he had said there were only small pictures behind the doors. A strange story was hidden inside the magic advent calendar. It would take 24 days to read the whole of the tale, since the story was chopped up into 24 small chapters, one for each day. Each day another pilgrim joined the pilgrimage. The 5th of December was a Saturday. Mama and Papa usually slept in longer on Saturdays. Joachim woke up at seven as he always did. He sat up in bed and examined the big picture on the outside of the calendar. Only now did he discover that one of the shepherds was holding a crook in his hand, just like Joshua. Why hadn't he noticed that before? Every time he looked at the magic ad calendar he discovered something new. But surely there couldn't be anything more to see than what had been there all the time. Wouldn't that be like a conjuring trick? Perhaps that was what the made the old cabin Perhaps that was what made the old advent calendar magical. The picture outside had never been completely finished, but it gradually painted in what was missing as somebody opened the doors and read the scraps of paper. Was it really possible to make a picture like that? Joachim knew that bread was not quite ready until it had stood and risen all by itself, first on the baking tray and then in the oven. He knew that it had something to do with yeast, for Joachim had often helped his mother or father bake bread. When he was smaller, he used to think that babies inside their mothers must be like small pieces of yeast. Wasn't the whole world a magic picture which added to itself? For the world changed all the time. It was never completely finished. If God had made a whole world that could create itself in every tiny nook and cranny, could he not then manage to make a picture that developed itself in front of the eyes of those looking at it? Joachim opened the door with the number five on it. Today's picture was of a rowing boat. In the boat there sat a shepherd, an angel, a little girl and several sheep. Joachim knew who they were, but what interested him most was the little scrap of paper. He unfolded it and began to read. The third sheep. Elizabeth, the lamb, the angel, the sheep and the shepherd sped through Sweden along dirt roads and grassy cart tracks between yellow fields and through dense forests until they looked out over a little town by the sea. <coughs> The wind was blowing in from the sea so strongly that the waves were breaking over the edge of the quay. Far out on the sea there was a sailing ship with three tall masts. At the edge of the town stood a large castle. We are in Halland, said the angel of Firiel. The town is called Halmstad and the waves are rolling in from the Kattegat. The watch says that 1789 years have passed since Jesus was born. Are we still in Sweden? asked Elizabeth. Imperial nodded, but not so very long ago it was part of Denmark. Joshua the shepherd said they should hurry on, and they crossed a landscape that began flat, but became flatter and flatter the further south they came. Between grazing land and enclosed pastures, the countryside revealed small villages, each with a little church and a few houses. They were rushing through dense woodland when Joshua stopped and knelt under a birch tree. He had found a sheep caught in a snare. The snare was probably set for a hare or a fox, he said, loosening a cord from the sheep's leg. But now the sheep can come with us to Bethlehem. It's one of us too, said Ephiriel. And the sheep seemed to answer, Meh, it bleated, Meh. Off they went again, the lamb and the two sheep first, the shepherd behind them, Elizabeth and Ephiriel last. They entered a town and stopped in front of an old church with two tall towers above the entrance. The angel told them that they were in Scania, that the town was called Lund, and that the big church was an ancient cathedral. He looked at his angel watch and said, The watch says 1745. That proud cathedral has stood here for centuries. Churches and cathedrals have been built all over the world, and it all started with the Christ child who was born in Bethlehem. It's as if a tiny seed of corn is put into the ground and grows into a whole field. The glory of heaven is dispersed very easily. Elizabeth wondered about what the angel had said. Can we go in? she asked. The angel nodded and they went into the great church, the sheep first, the shepherd next, and Elizabeth after the shepherd. 
Inside was the most beautiful sound Elizabeth had ever heard. From the great organ there swelled such rich and powerful melodies that tears came to her eyes. When the angel saw it, he said, Yes, weep, my child. That wonderful music was composed by Johann Sebastian Bach. He is alive in Germany at this time, and his music will be heard throughout Europe. That's not surprising, for his music is like a tiny shred of the glory of heaven. The only things that disturbed the music were two sheep bleating and a lamb scurrying about so that its little bell was tinkling. A man in black robes came towards them from the chancel. It was the priest. Get out, all of you, he said sternly. Lund Cathedral is not a common sheepfold. Then the angel of Furiel stepped out in front of the priest. He spread out his wings and said, The pastor should not be dismayed. Rather, he should not forget that Jesus was born in a stable and that he was called the Good Shepherd. The priest stopped abruptly, for even though he was a priest in an ancient cathedral, he was not used to angels. He fell to his knees and folded his hands. Glory to God in the highest, he exclaimed. They left him like that. The angel made a sign to the others that they should go. Moments like that should never last too long, he said. He may write a report to the bishop, then the whole thing will be hushed up, or rumours will start to circulate about the mir miracle at Lund. In any case, the bishop should remind the pastor that the word pastor means shepherd, neither more nor less. Joshua struck his crook against the church wall. To Bethlehem! To Bethlehem! They sped through a large park teeming with birds. A couple of soldiers came riding in their direction. When they caught sight of the lively procession, they called out, HALT! and galloped towards them. But just as they bent down from their horses to seize Joshua the shepherd, the soldiers vanished like dew in sunshine. Elizabeth gaped, for they were still standing in the same spot as before the soldiers had ridden up. They've disappeared, she exclaimed. The angel's laugh was like rippling water. <laughs> yes, in a way, but we were the ones who disappeared. Perhaps they were so terrified when they saw what happened that they fell off their horses. Elizabeth was still wondering at this, so Ephiriel had to explain to her again how they were travelling. We are travelling in two directions at once. One journey goes south on the map to the town of Bethlehem in Judea. The other passes through history to David's city at the time when Jesus was born. It's a very unusual way of travelling. Many people would say it was quite impossible, but nothing is impossible for God. Elizabeth marvelled at the angel's words and hid them in her heart. It makes it simpler to avoid danger, remarked Joshua. If we can't give the slip to priests or soldiers by taking a step to one side, we have to take a step backwards in time instead. A mere quarter or half an hour can be sufficient. With those words, they were on their way again. They passed large fields and small villages. Soon they could glimpse the sea in the distance. In a short while, they were standing in a deserted beach. This is Urla Sound, said Ephiriel. My watch shows that 1,703 years have passed since Jesus was born. We must get across to Denmark before the 17th century is over. Here's a rowing boat, announced Joshua. They climbed on board the boat, the sheep first, Elizabeth and Ephiriel behind them. Joshua pushed the boat out and jumped on board at the last minute. The angel Ephiriel rowed so strongly that the spray foamed about the prow. The boat was rocked by the waves so that the lamb's bell rang piercingly all the way across. Joshua sat in the stern. Suddenly he pointed forwards and said, I can see Denmark. I can see Denmark. Joachim thought he could see a little of Denmark too, but it was only inside his head. It was extraordinary that Elizabeth was able to travel backwards in time. Strange to think that 2,000 years had passed since Jesus was born. But the stories about Jesus had travelled through those 2,000 years, so that Joachim had heard about him too. In a way, Elizabeth was travelling in the other direction. When Mama and Papa got up, they had to see the picture in the advent calendar. Joachim pointed to the boat with Elizabeth, Ephiriel, Joshua and the three sheep, but he said nothing about what had happened in the park or in the cathedral in Lund. They would only have begun to ask how he knew what a cathedral was, and jo Joachim had decided not to talk about the pieces of paper in the calendar. He had hidden them in the secret box. 
After breakfast, they went to the big department store in town to do some Christmas shopping. In the toy department on the first floor, Joachim began to wonder if this was where Elizabeth had run after the lamb. There was even an old escalator here. But wasn't it all a very long time ago? This shop must be 40 years old, he said to his mother. She looked at him oddly. I should think it's even older than that, was all she said. So he found out. Elizabeth and the lamb had perhaps escaped from this shop. He could understand very well why, for Joachim didn't like shopping in large stores either. He got really angry with the nagging sound of all the cash registers. That Saturday was extra long because he was thinking about what would happen when Elizabeth and the angel Ethereal got to Denmark. It was even worse at bedtime. He had to lie right under the magic calendar which was still full to bursting with secrets. To sleep so close to all those secrets was like living in a chocolate shop without being able to taste one single tiny chocolate. The end of chapter five. See you guys tomorrow. Bye.